Coming to DARPA is like grabbing the nose cone of a rocket and holding on for dear life. DARPA is a place where if you don't invent the internet, you only get a B. A DARPA program manager quite literally invents tomorrow. Coming to work every day and being humbled by that. DARPA is not one person or one place. It's a collection of people that are excited about moving technology forward. Hello and welcome to Voices from DARPA. I'm your host, Tom Shortrich. On this episode, we're diving into DARPA's AI Cyber Challenge, AICC, which recently revealed the winners of its final competition at DEF CON 33. In third place, congratulations to Team Theory. In second place, with a prize of $3 million, congratulations to Team Trail of Bits. And in first place, with a prize of $4 million, congratulations, Team Atlanta. That's all for this episode of Voices from DARPA. I'm just kidding. Congratulations to the winners, but there's a lot more to the story. If you want to start from the beginning, you can go back and listen to episode 73, where we first discussed the AI Cyber Challenge and before any of the competitions had taken place. In the two years since, a lot has happened. To set the playing field, let's hear from DARPA and ARPA-H AICC Program Manager Andrew Carney. To achieve technology truly indistinguishable from magic, we need infrastructure and software that is extremely robust, extremely performant, and extremely resilient. But in today's increasingly software-driven world, we heavily rely on projects developed and maintained by passionate, capable volunteers and donations. And this fuels our critical infrastructure. It underpins our daily lives. At the same time, that critical infrastructure is under constant attack by nation states and unsophisticated cyber actors. How do we go from where we are today to what we can imagine, the sort of tech future and all the benefits of realizing that. DARPA director Stephen Winchell describes the current state of the foundational tech stack and a fundamental problem that AICC is working to solve. We're living in a world right now that has ancient digital scaffolding that's holding everything up. A lot of the code bases, a lot of the languages, a lot of the ways we do business and everything we've built on top of it incurred huge technical debt over the years. And the reality is it is a problem that is beyond human scale. And it's a critical problem that we need to solve right now. And so in response to this growing need for better automated vulnerability discovery and remediation, DARPA launched the AI Cyber Challenge and has collaborated with ARPA-H to change the world. This is one of the major efforts that we have to actually try to solve some of those problems in a way that's scalable, in a way that leverages a lot of our strengths, American AI companies, ingenuity here in the United States, and also just really, really awesome people. This is a huge opportunity for the community to have great new tools and for all of us to work together to secure that digital scaffolding and make all of our lives better, both for every American citizen, as well as for the men and women in uniform who are out there on the front line. So these are critical technologies for all of us and automating them and scaling them is the future. So that's the problem space and the big picture on AICC. But what does the competition actually entail? So this is a public competition to develop autonomous systems that can find real vulnerabilities and patch them effectively in source code. The vulnerabilities themselves are realistic. We've taken real open source software and developed synthetic forks and developed realistic vulnerabilities and inserted them into those synthetic code bases. So millions of lines of real code with novel synthetic vulnerabilities that have never been seen by any person or LLM before. So discovery is important, but patching is where we really change the game. So we wanted to reward teams and systems that could patch as effectively as possible. We see a lot of efforts on automated vulnerability discovery, and those are great. I love that. That's been most of my career. But what we need is to fill this gap in patch development, patch generation, in an effective, timely manner, because the scale of the problem is sort of beyond what we can deal with as humans. We have a lot of things to address before we get to that tech magic. 
DARPA tackles challenges right at the edge of possibility. But AICC marks a pivotal inflection point in cybersecurity, proving that we can automatically find and patch vulnerabilities in code at speed and scale. Dr. Kathleen Fisher, Director of DARPA's Information Innovation Office, I2O, weighs in. So AICC, the competition, has changed the future of cybersecurity. We fundamentally changed our understanding of what's possible. Two years ago, the people who work in this space, when they started the competition, turns out they were pretty skeptical. They thought it was going to be the kind of the cyber reasoning, the traditional program analysis kinds of tools that were going to win the day. But over the course of the competition, they realized that the AI systems actually had a ton to add to the competition. So how they're going to approach these kinds of tools in the future, fundamentally different. The artifacts that they built turned out to be really, really good at finding and fixing bugs, which we saw in the results of the competition. Let's put the competition into perspective. The playing field, if you will, was 54 million lines of code, into which the AICC team inserted 70 novel synthetic vulnerabilities to be discovered by the competitors. Of those 70, teams discovered 54 and patched 43. But that's not all. They found 18 zero days and they patched 11 of them. And they did that, like it took 45 minutes on average to find, to patch a vulnerability. That's just like game changing times. And it took like $152 per successful task. That's just super, super cheap compared to the time that it would take a person to do that. So that will enable us to find and fix bugs in critical software, just at game changingly different rates and costs. So like that's the technical miracle. So DARPA has taken that technical miracle off the table. Now, even though we at DARPA love our metrics, we know that there can be more to learn than just what's visible in the data. One of the most exciting things about this competition is how much the teams have left on the table that we weren't able to necessarily capture. The amazing things the teams can do. The scoreboard is an accurate and useful reflection of their performance in the competition, but it's not an accurate representation of their potential or even capability today. All of the teams have done something incredible and have a unique capacity to find and patch vulnerabilities. To this point, we have talked about the implications of AICC in very broad strokes. Critical infrastructure and cybersecurity. For a more concrete example, let's turn to our friends at the Advanced Research Projects Agency for Health, ARPA-H. ARPA-H partnered with DARPA on AICC in March of 2024, expanding the competition's prize pool and providing additional insight and connections to our nation's healthcare infrastructure. Dr. Jennifer Roberts, director of ARPA-H's Resilient Systems Office, puts the potential impact from AICC in real-world perspective. What our office focuses on is how to make it so that the healthcare ecosystem works well, regardless of whether it's at steady state or there's an unexpected disruption, like a cyber attack on a hospital system which is a huge challenge area, especially considering a third of our nation's hospitals are at risk of going bankrupt. So a cyber attack could be the thing between them and closing their doors, which clearly has drastic implications for patient care. So health infrastructure is increasingly targeted by cyber attacks, and that has negative implications both for patient care and for patient privacy. And even if a cyber attack only causes delays of patient care for a few minutes, that can have drastic consequences. We have been so excited to be part of the AI Cyber Challenge in order to make it so that we can draw more intention and more progress toward the unique challenges in the healthcare sector because the diversity of medical devices, the number of different types of devices in a hospital that need to work 24-7 just makes this a much harder problem. Patient lives are at risk, as is privacy of patient records. So the off-the-shelf tools are not cutting it, which is why we are so excited about the amazing results because this can be game-changing in healthcare and move us toward a reality where ransomware attacks across hospitals become a thing of the past. So the AICC competition is complete. But that means the real work is just getting started. Having the competition results made public is super exciting 
it lets us start the next phase of this adventure where we get to take the technology that the teams have developed and actually have it introduced into the real world. We've proven that it can find and patch vulnerabilities at scale in realistic code and find zero days and patch them. And now our success has sort of given us this opportunity to help continue that deployment into real code bases and secure our critical infrastructure at large. So one piece of that is all of the teams to get their money have to open source their technology. Since the end of the competition, all seven of the finalist teams, not just the winners, have open sourced their cyber reasoning systems. You can find those at archive.aicyberchallenge.com, along with competition infrastructure, challenges, and documentation. We'll have a link in the show notes. People out in the world can just go download and start using this and finding and patching their software today. And I should say that the technology that we're seeing, the game-changing results, that's the worst it's ever going to be. It's just going to get better from there. We've heard an awful lot from DARPA and ARPA-H. Now let's turn the mics over to the real stars of this show, the competitor teams. First, from Team Theory, who plays third, Tyler Nicewander. Our team is a lot of people who play DEF CON Capture the Flag. We've gotten first place in the competition eight times. Most of the times we don't get first, we have gotten second. I was also part of the team that won the Cyber Grand Challenge in 2016. So we have a lot of experience with all these things, and this really has been a game-changing thing, in my opinion. This was not just another, okay, yeah, we'll do another competition. This was, you know, a massive change and a massive shift in what I think is possible for the future. When we started playing, we were pretty confident that we'd be able to solve challenge problems, right? If someone inserts a challenge problem and expects it to be solved, we can probably handle that. I think the most exciting and surprising thing to us was when we ran some of these challenge problems and realized we don't just find the challenge problems, we're finding real security bugs that are relevant today that the upstream people don't know about, right? And that was really exciting because at the end of the day, the goal isn't, I mean, yes, we want to win the competition, but the real goal is to have security relevant findings that we could use in the real world. From second place finisher team Trail of Bits, here's Michael Brown. This is an area that I've worked on for probably the last seven years, the intersection of AIML and applying that to solve security problems. AIML has long promised to give us the scale needed to tip the scales back in favor of defenders who have to defend everywhere all the time versus attackers only have to be right one place at one time. And I think today that promise was finally delivered on. We've finally shown that we can find real world vulnerabilities, we can patch them, and we can do this at scale, and we can do it at a price that is reasonable for virtually any organization to invest in. We really designed our cyber reasoning system, which we call Buttercup, to be used by anybody. At Trillibits, we're big believers in open source, and we're big believers that in security, we need a rising tide that lifts all ships. So we think virtually anybody can use the code, and we've actually backed that up. So in addition to open sourcing the versions of our cyber reasoning system that competed in both the semifinal and final challenges, we also open source a version of Buttercup that runs on a laptop. So literally anybody can use it, and that's available right now. For first place Team Atlanta, victory wasn't assured. In fact, as team lead Dr. Taesu Kim notes, the team was working hard right up until moments before the submission deadline. We put so much energy to this competition for the last two years. And then we are worried that our system might fail. This competition is all about automations, but one single line of the CRS might destroy the competition. We worry so much in every stage of the competitions. Six hours before the deadline, we found a very significant vulnerability after submitting, and then we have to wake up every single patching case at 5 a.m. to fix those type of vulnerabilities. Although this is a single line, plays so critical role in our system, might our system fail? And obviously, those last-minute fixes worked. This is a great moment. You can think of it this way. In the future, the AI agent and every single one of you guys now have a security expert next to it. Every day decision you're going to make, you can advise, you can get some feedback from what you're doing, and even proactively involve in your day daily based decisions in your lifetime. I think I see the possibility right now about Software developer now have agent like we develop right now can leverage those systems in their daily life. I think this is uh, not the future. Because of AICC, we truly believe this is happening right now. It drastically improve the quality of their software they're writing and the possibility to fix ahead of attacker. 
For a deeper dive into each of the finalist teams, you can visit AICyberChallenge.com, where in addition to the open source cyber reasoning systems and competition data we already mentioned, you can watch each team's presentation at DEF CON on challenges and lessons learned through the AICC journey. Again, links in the show notes. Now, while the AICC competition is complete, the challenge continues. Here's DARPA director, Stephen Winchell. How do we work with these small teams to commercialize their product and actually get it out onto different critical infrastructure software systems and start patching them at scale? We invest an extra $1.4 million to make sure the teams have a lot of incentives in prizes to actually go out and solve some of these problems and start working them. And we'll be incrementing 10,000 at a time, up to 200,000 for each of the finalist teams as they go out into critical infrastructure software and start actually rolling out solutions. And Dr. Kathleen Fisher. We see in the newspaper constant reports of national security vulnerabilities being put at risk, things like Salt Typhoon and Volt Typhoon and, and other attacks. And we have the sense of learned helplessness of that there's just nothing we can do about it. That's the way software is. But AICC points the way to a brighter future where software does what it's supposed to do and nothing else. AICC is pointing to a way where we can have a world where we can have software that we can rely on. Of course, this is just the first step. We need to actually materialize that future. And it's up to everyone to help us go from the world where we are right now to realize the vision that AICC is pointing us to. And to close this one out, here's Andrew Carney with his final comments from the DEF CON stage. The world changes today. The systems that were developed by every finalist, they've shown that they can fix software extremely quickly, real software, in a scalable, cost-effective way. And these tools are yours to use right now. There's no excuse not to use this flavor automation, and it'll only get better from here. This is the new floor. So if you're a developer, a maintainer, or an end user, we want to hear from you, especially if you work in critical infrastructure. Reach out to us at AIXCC at DARPA.mil and let us help you leverage this new technology to change the world. That's all for this episode of Voices from DARPA. For more information on the AI Cyber Challenge, visit AICyberChallenge.com and DARPA.mil. Check the show notes for links. As always, thanks for listening.